Calgary Bow, the Minister of Advanced Education. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a great privilege for me to stand here today and deliver my maiden speech in this assembly. I am truly honored that the residents of Calgary Bow put their trust in me and in our party. They did so, Mr. Speaker, with hope in their hearts. They chose fundamentally to reject the politics of fear, and rather they decided to embrace the politics of hope. Before I begin, I want to take a moment to recognize and thank those who made my journey to this place possible. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge and thank my incredible wife. I am forever grateful that God brought her into my life and filled my heart with love and happiness. Her unwavering love and constant encouragement drove me to keep fighting when times were tough, and I am forever grateful. I also want to acknowledge my dedicated and hardworking campaign team who gave their time and efforts in pursuit of a better Alberta. Thank you all for believing in me and for believing in a stronger province. Lastly, I also want to thank the residents of Calgary Bow who put their trust in me. And I want to let them know, all residents of Calgary Bow, whether you voted for me or not, I want you to know that I will be a strong representative for all of you. Earning your support is truly an honour, and I commit to being a transparent and accountable representative to you all. And as I stand here, I also want to acknowledge two very important and specific individuals who've allowed me to be here. Those two individuals, of course, are my parents. My father, Mr. Speaker, is a carpenter by trade. He was born and raised in a small village on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. He grew up in a very small and cramped house with very little modern amenities. At a young age, he traveled around the region, finding whatever work he could. But he wanted more, Mr. Speaker, and filled with courage and optimism, he made his way to a place of opportunity. That place was Canada. While working here, my father met my mother. She was also born in, was born in Cyprus and was raised in a growing but small seaside town. And in her household, Mr. Speaker, they didn't have very much. And singing Christmas carols in the bitter cold was how she got her spending money. After losing her mother at a young age, her father decided it was time for a change, and the entire family relocated here to Canada. To deal with this change, my mother was unable to complete her schooling, and she waited tables to bring in a few extra dollars for the family. And it was during one of her evening shifts, Mr. Speaker, where she met my father. After marrying, they moved to Calgary to start their new life together. And like many other Greek immigrants, they opened a restaurant and got straight to work. They did so by emptying the college savings fund and remortgaging their home. They put everything on the line. And they opened a small restaurant in Calgary on Elbow Drive and began their new future. They were guided, Mr. Speaker, by a belief that hard work and perseverance was enough to shatter any barrier to success, and they were right. 45 years later, they are still in the restaurant industry, and while a lot has changed, some things have not. They continue to open and close their restaurant, Mr. Speaker, every single day. But now they can reflect back on a lifetime of accomplishment. They built their dream home. They traveled the world. And most important to them, they gave their three children educational opportunities that they did not have. My sister found success in the energy sector. My brother became a pilot, and I pursued public service. As you can see, their determination gave my siblings and I new opportunities, and it allowed me to open new doors. Their foundational success has allowed me to stand in this assembly today. But Mr. Speaker, this story is not unique. It's one that we've heard before, and that's because 
It's the story of Alberta. The story of Alberta has always been one of hope and opportunity, where anyone can find success and prosperity, just as Alberta's First Peoples did over 8,000 years ago when the ancestors of today's First Nations communities arrived in the area. As the first inhabitants, they found a world rich in natural resources which provided abundant food, clothing and shelter. Pioneers and new immigrants persevered through harsh environments to build towns, cities and the foundations of a vibrant national economy. And the Fathers of Confederation established a new nation across this great land, which, in my opinion, is the greatest country on earth. As I took my seat in this assembly, my parents and wife watched from the gallery. So too did my two beautiful daughters. And as I looked up, I was reminded why I fought to come to this place. I did so, Mr. Speaker, because I wanted to ensure that my two girls and all future generations inherit a better province. I am a passionate Albertan and a proud Calgarian, and this place is worth fighting for. Mr. Speaker, I've had the fortune of uh, traveling around the world and visiting places like Cambodia, Japan, South Africa, London, Austria, Thailand, and more. And I can say without rev reservation that Alberta is the best place on earth. I consider myself, Mr. Speaker, a son of the Alberta advantage. And I was concerned that, my pro that the province that rewarded hard work and entrepreneurialism was being lost. I never planned on running for office, Mr. Speaker. I was preoccupied with advancing my career, being a good dad and a loving husband. But like many Albertans, I began to see my neighbors lose their jobs. I started to see friends and family struggling to pay their bills. And I started to see businesses closing down. I knew it was time to take action. And that's when I decided to run. While on the campaign trail, my resolve to improve my province strengthened as I heard more stories of Albertans who were suffering. Like Denise in Coach Hill, who choked back tears because she was unsure if she was going to be able to make next month's mortgage payment. Like Andy in Bonesse, whose business was being crushed by the weight of the NDP's carbon tax. And like Teresa in Wildwood, who sold her car and her furniture just to keep a roof over her head. These stories are always in my mind. And as I was sworn in, I felt the weight of responsibility settle on my shoulders. Denise, Andy, Teresa, and hundreds of thousands of other Albertans are counting on us, Mr. Speaker, and we can't let them down. What inspired me, though, is that none of the people I spoke to looked for a handout. They are proud Albertans after all, and they, all they want, Mr. Speaker, is the opportunity to work. That is why on April 16th we witnessed a historic election where a record number of people voted. They sought a solution that would once again open the doors of opportunity. On April 16th, they put their trust in our United Conservative Party, and I am incredibly humbled for the trust that has been given to my colleagues and I. They also chose, Mr. Speaker, a bold and ambitious man to open the doors of opportunity again, and that man is Jason Kenney. And I am proud to stand with him in creating a better province. A better province is one without a carbon tax, because a single mom should not be punished for driving her kids to school. Pensioners should not be forced to buy less groceries, and hard-working Alberta families should not pay more to heat their homes in the dead of winter. A better province is one where a strong economy helps get Albertans back to work. Unemployment is not just a statistical figure. It's about human beings, their families, and their futures. That is why our government will be obsessed with job creation. We will fight to give Albertans the dignity of meaningful work, and with that bring hope, prosperity, and happiness to the hundreds of thousands of unemployed Albertans. A better province, Mr. Speaker, is one where a better health care system is possible. Too many Albertans are suffering in pain as their condition deteriorates and while they wait for treatment, and that is simply unacceptable. 
Colleagues, as we begin our work to create a better province, we must do so with humility. We must reject the politics of fear and embrace the politics of hope. As United Conservatives, we don't care who you love or what God you worship. We care about how hard you will work and how you will help contribute to a stronger Alberta. Together, we can renew Alberta as a place of hope and opportunity. We will build a better Alberta for the next generation. And together, we will reignite the spirit of Alberta, a spirit that drew my parents here and gave them success and opportunity where young, new Canadians with limited, limited opportunities can open a restaurant and 47 years later, their son can be elected to the Alberta Legislature. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Albertans deserve the opportunity to create a better future for themselves and I will dedicate my efforts in this Assembly to ensure all Albertans have the same opportunities my parents had. Thank you very much.